to order the Stafford City Council Annual Town Meeting, Wednesday, January 25th, 2023. If you will join with me and please rise if you're able to the Pledge of Allegiance to our American and Texas flag. And that will be at the end on item five, and that the time for all speakers will be three minutes. Will be three minutes. Item two, presentation of mayor's annual state of the city message and- Mayor, you, I thought that we had agreed to five minutes. Yes, I, 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 we agreed five minutes. Not three, you yes. said three. Them five minutes, yeah. We cut from two five minute sessions to one. Yes. One. Okay, I stand corrected. Yeah. I got outvoted. So I'll go with that. So again, council we will not speak on item three. They will speak on item five. And the total time will be five minutes. Everybody ha That's right. correct? Happy? All right. Yes. So first of all, I want to thank Ms. Chandra Phillips. She did the transcribing and rewriting of my six or eight drafts, and I want to thank her for that time and patience. I also want to express my appreciation to all the department heads with our city for the information that they contributed that I used in this presentation tonight. I also want to thank our multimedia partment and our HCC partners for this production tonight. There's been a few little wrinkles added to it. The technical difficulty with the PA wasn't one of it, but we wanted to do things a little bit different and show you some things where you're simply not sitting here and listening to me talk for two and a half hours. And thirdly, I want to thank every member of the City of Stafford staff for what you do for each and every one of us every day. You don't get the thanks and appreciation you deserve, but we thank you immensely for your dedication to the City of Stafford and the citizens. So with that, we'll start State of the City and Goals for 2023 by Mayor Cecil Willis. 25 plus months ago, I received the honor of being elected the Mayor of Stafford. It is truly humbling to have your peers select you to manage their business and affairs. These past two and a half years have flown by but during that time, we have continued to remain focused and move the city forward. I want to welcome those of you here in person and those who are viewing and thank you on behalf of myself and city council. Most cities that I'm familiar with simply give an annual presentation by the mayor and maybe some staff. In Stafford, we have always presented more. You not only get a status report, but you also have the ability to ask questions and offer suggestions. This is a format we have practiced for decades. 
Assemble tonight are your city council members, city department heads, legal counsel, city engineer, and Stafford Center manager to address any questions you may have. Stafford, in my opinion, has been fortunate to have had a group of dedicated elected officials and professional staff through the years that have helped guide us to where we are today. No matter who you are or what type of organization you have, it is important to have dedicated individuals engaged in the process. We continue to have opportunities to address, as I mentioned to the department heads at our very first meeting. In my opinion, as we move forward, we will need to address ways to continue to be responsive in all areas of change that continues around us. As I stated last year, the city of Stafford is alive and well. This year, in my opinion, the city is Stafford is even more alive and well. After facing COVID, two winter freezes, supply chain issues, debating whether we're in a recession or going into a recession, and an unsecured southern border to round out the dilemmas. I can state that Stafford is still standing and moving forward. I feel confident in making that statement due to the continued efforts of the citizens, commercial base, city council, and staff. A number of new and modified employees positions have been filled. New computer equipment and software programs are in the pipeline. Annual street maintenance repairs are back on track and expanding, just to name a few. I will give more specific examples as we go through this presentation. There will always be a small group that advocates we should do things differently in any organization. I like to think they simply do not understand the complexity of the operations. There are even rumblings by a few that we should change what we are doing financially and possibly reinstate property tax. Let me state my position clearly. The budget I presented for 2022-2023 fiscal year reflects a zero property tax for the 29th consecutive year and proposed an increased fund balance. So please count me as a no vote for personal property tax for the city of Stafford. The zero property tax helps the city to attract not only a commercial base, but residents do enjoy not having to pay a personal property tax. So let's dive in and look at facts regarding the city of Stafford. Everything starts with finances, so that's where we will start. Every business, every organization and family monitor their finances. No one, regardless of who they are, cannot survive on a credit card for long. You have to have a sound policy and firm base. We have been blessed to have both, it was by design and not by luck. Previous mayors and councils believe fervently in this idea. We will continue to start budgeting conversations timely and discuss any new objectives we might have. Using the experience and the knowledge of our chief financial officer, 
Ms. Alka Shaw and her staff, along with our financial advisors and auditors, we base all decisions on sound governmental accounting principles. We start from the bottom up in our budget preparation. We want to meet our current services and improve if and when we can on them. Now let's look at personnel. We have been able to grow our numbers from last year. We currently have authorized 176 full-time and 85 part-time positions. Infrastructures and developments within the city from both city and public investments. Regarding infrastructure, we have completed the connectivity of Trinity Drive into the grid. The annual $1 million street maintenance program is moving forward and we are evaluating our approach for this year. We've had several meetings on that. We are preparing our request to Fort Bend County for their next mobility bond project. This was a request from our two county commissioners to present them with projects that possibly we could work together on in Stafford. TxDOT is close to wrapping up the FM 1092 mobility maintenance project. This will provide for safer travel conditions on that corridor, and I will also say it's a much smoother ride. Drainage system improvements. Our consulting city engineer is doing an evaluation of drainage issues that we can provide a positive solution to. We are also working extensively with Missouri City to provide additional detention capabilities in the Willow Waterhole watershed and improve flow in two major channels. I might mention on the old TXI property, they are presently excavating and expanding a detention pond on that site. Let's look at developments. Since May 2022, and why I use that date, in May we started a brand new software program in our development service department, which will give us more information and track what's going on and provide us a guideline to what's happening. The city of Stafford has processed or is currently processing in excess of 1,100 commercial permits. The valuation of these commercial businesses estimated at nearly $300 million. That's in eight months. In addition, the city of Stafford has processed over 500 residential permits. The evaluation of these residence permits is estimated at over $100 million. So in eight short months, we have excess of $500 million of new uh, tax base, which does not benefit us, but it helps the school and the water district. Let's look at the grid where continued development is going. These businesses have opened since last state of the city. February of 22, the 7-Eleven on West Airport, June, Lazy Dog Restaurant on Southwest Freeway, November, Kelsey Seabold Clinic on Nexus Avenue. Let's glance at SMSD. SMSD and the city have a theme, we are one. The district is a component entity of the city and that has legal connotations to it. It is often referred to as our crown jewel from day one that the city and that the school was established. 
Recently, it has taken on even more glitter as our new STEM Academy received an A rating in its first year. First year in existence in Stafford, STEM Academy, A rating, the highest you can get in the state. Another bright spot is the increased scoring for our remaining campuses. The goal is the same, being the best we can be as a district. I would like to recognize the board, and there's at least two members here, President Hinojosa and Trustee Suzette Thompson, I saw her somewhere, along with our superintendent, Dr. Bostic. I want to thank you for your commitment and dedication to the students of this district, and I also want to recognize your staff and the great job they are doing, continuing committed to our students at SMSD. And this is important. Success is only possible when all, when all are on board and heading in the same direction. Stafford EDC, another component entity of the city is the Stafford Economic Development Corporation headed by Councilman Wynn Guerra. The task of this seven member board is to help promote economic development by attracting new businesses and retaining existing businesses in our community. I want to acknowledge their efforts and commend them for their diligence in the job that each and every one are doing. We have 10 departments with the city, and so now we're going to look briefly into each one of those departments to give you an idea of not only what they do in the long run, but what has happened in the past year. The police department under Chief Richard Ramirez. 2022 was a very productive year for the Stafford Police Department. The department has once again received accreditation from the Texas Police Chiefs Association. This is the second time the department has achieved achieved accreditation in the last five years. The department is audited every three years for accreditation. The department also completed phase one of the flock license plate reader and has been instrumental in clearing many crimes that otherwise would have not had any leads to follow up on. In the first week of January, this system helped track a suspect in a child abduction case out of Del Rio, Texas. Stafford patrol officers located the suspect and recovered the abducted child so that she could be safely returned to her family. The Criminal Investigation Division worked a homicide that spanned across the nation. Due to the hard work and countless hours our detectives put into this case, all four suspects have been placed in custody and are awaiting trial. Detectives had to travel to Louisiana and to Michigan to make this case arrest. Two Stafford patrol officers received life-saving awards because of their heroic actions. A call of a suicidal subject with an aggressive dog was received when the officers arrived. They found the subject had hanged himself. The officers entered the residence without regard for their own safety. The officers were able to get the subject down and restrained him before he could do further harm to himself. 
The subject was transported to a local hospital and the dog was safely returned to a family member. The fire department headed by Chief Larry DiCamello continues to remain an ISO rating of one, which is the highest you can receive. This past year, they responded to 4,527 incidents. That is 12.4 incidents per day, every day, 365 days a year. 56% were EMS related and 44 were fire related. So the fire department that my parents and my grandparents grew up with is much more than fire trucks taking off to put out a fire as these percentages show you. They are multifaceted in EMS, fire, emergency management, and other areas. 6.06 .06 minutes was average response time. 32.91% were simultaneous incidents and 29 Point twelve minutes was the average on scene time at each incident. Most common occupancy types of incidents. First is a single family resident, followed by apartments, followed by hotel motel, then parking lot and garages, commercial roadways, round out the areas. Which were our busiest stations? Fire station one, which is in the island. Fire station number three, which is our joint station in Meadows Place. And fire station two on Mueller Road. Something that I know that I and this entire city council as well as the fire department is excited about this year we were able to create three full-time lieutenant positions and three full-time firefighters positions in the fiscal year 23. This action adds six new bodies to our fire department and establishes a better line of communication. Another thing we're really excited about is the purchase of a 4x4 grass brush fire vehicle. This compact vehicle is very instrumental in assisting in off-road activities and getting into confined places that our larger equipment cannot get into. The administration department a vital component of normal day-to-day -day city operations is the administration department, which is typically the first point of contact for visitors and callers. This department is comprised of City Secretary Ms. Roxanne Benitez, Assistant City Secretary Ms. Chandra Phillips, and Administrative Services Coordinator Ms. Rochelle Worthington. There have been many positive changes in this department, which include two newly appointed employees, Ms. Phillips, I mean Ms. Benitez and Ms. Phillips, as well as the promotion of Ms. Worthington, a long-term Stafford employee. Although compact, this department maintains all city ordinances, resolutions, and vital historical records, as well as processes public information requests, all in a timely manner. They also create agendas and minutes for all city council, SEDC, and committee meetings. In addition, the administration department is responsible for all city elections. City Secretary Roxanne Benitez 
serves as the election official and the entire staff receives continuous training as elections are essential to our democracy. Ms. Benitez and her staff have done an excellent job of streamlining several processes, which have significantly increased departmental productivity and reduced expenses. The finance department headed by our chief financial officer, Al Kashal. The goals of this year's budget were maintain service levels, streamline procedures to be efficient, rebuild fund balance, a balanced budget as required by law. I am pleased to report that we have achieved all these goals, which can be verified by the facts. We have implemented some financial policies to provide guidance to staff and management. To name a few, financial management policy, including the first ever fund balance policy and a purchasing policy revisited. The city's chart of accounts has been revised to be able to pull the data to analyze the financial position of the city. We have funded the implementation of an upgraded financial software, ENCODE 10, to be more effective and efficient. The external audit firm, Whitley Plin, has completed the state required certified independent financial audit. Again, this year, the city has been awarded a clean and unmodified audit opinion, which is the highest level of opinions that been, can be given to a financial statement. It means that our financial statements are reliable and free from any misstatements. When Ms. Shaw took over the office, the ending fund balance of the general fund for the fiscal year was projected to be 2000, for the fiscal year 2021 was projected at 154,400 and eight dollars. Under our initiatives, we ended that year with 4.3 million in fund balance. And we will end the fiscal year 2022 with 7.6 million in fund balance. And if I may for a moment, Fund balance is kind of like a savings account, but that's not really what it is, but we'll use that as an example. We started with 4.3 million at the end of 21. At the end of 22, it increased by 3.8 million. So the value of that is going up because we now have more money in it. The city's cash position is also very sound with 15.4 million in liquid cash and 10.6 million invested in governmental agencies, brokered CDs and treasury notes as permitted by Public Funds Investment Act. With the implementation of investment policy and aggressive action taken by our chief financial officer, the city has earned over $162,000 in interest this fiscal year, four months. Please make a note that last fiscal year, at this time, it was less. It was around $2,000. 
So the policies, the procedures, the initiatives that we have put into place are paying dividends. The total sales tax revenue received in fiscal year 2021 is 22.1 million. And the fiscal year 2022, it is 25.9 million with a net increase of 3.8 million. Let's put this into perspective. In the entire state of Texas, we have ranked between 66th and 69th in sales tax receipts out of the 1,169 cities for the first four months this fiscal year. And what's amazing to me, Stafford is seven square miles. The state of Texas is somewhere slightly less than 270,000 square miles. So this little seven square miles is an economic engine. In my day, which most of you won't remember, there was a little book and, and it was about a little engine and the name of the little engine was Little Toot. And he just kept trying and trying and trying. That's the city of Stafford. <laughs> Another noteworthy information is the city's pension plan for our full-time employees. The Texas Municipal Retirement System, TMRS, has reported the city's retirement plan position is at 102 point 11 percent which means the plan's fiduciary net position is higher than the pension liabilities this is another first time in the history of our organization and as i was visiting with miss shaw and she's been in this business for over 26 years she said i have never been associated with a governmental entity that could say what we just stated. The Recreation and Civic Center under the leadership of Ms. Susan Ricks. The Stafford Civic Center, which is where we are tonight, has been a landmark in Stafford since 1986. The Civic Center has booked many events over the past 35 years and continues to book a multitude of diverse events. It showcases three tiered levels with a stage and balcony. Theater style, we can accommodate up to 900 guests. Banquet style, we can accommodate up to 300 with a dance floor. We have weddings, receptions, concerts, cultural programs, plays, bodybuilding competition, comedians, graduation, business meeting, conferences, trade shows, parties, dance recitals, and a multitude of SMSD events, just to name a few. And by SMSD using this, this was one of the reasons we built this facility here so it could serve as an auditorium for SMSD and they wouldn't have to build one. The Stafford City Pool opened in 1984, making many Stafford residents happy to have a cool, refreshing, and fun activity for their family. It opens on Memorial Day weekend each year and closes on Labor Day weekend. We host Stafford swim team and SMSD swim team. About two hours ago, I received a text. I have verified it with the superintendent and I know it's totally due to the fact that SMSD uses the Stafford pool. Your Stafford SMSD swim team 
is the District 11 4A champions. So that's another first for this city and SMSD. Stafford residents can purchase a pool tag for the entire season for only $15 per person. You can also take swim lessons at the pool and rent the pool for a private party. So come make a splash and enjoy the cool water on one of those hot summer days. Our pool managers, guards, and gatekeepers will be looking forward to your visit. And I need to mention one more thing. From day one that that pool was built, it has afforded the opportunity to Stafford Elementary students during the regular school year to take swim lessons, which some of them may not have ever had an opportunity to do, and hopefully help save their lives and other people's lives. And that's another benefit of the city and SMSD and the relationship we have. The Stafford Center is guided by Mr. Brian Blum of FM Squared. Emerging out of the pandemic, the Stafford Center witnessed a dramatic uptick in business in fiscal year 2021-2022. The center exceeded revenue projections while simultaneously spending less than budgeted expenditures. And that's a habit they've had from day one, make money and spend less, which increases you making more money. The success of the center is directly attributed to the diversity of programming the facility hosts on an annual basis. And this is one thing we put in place that this was to be for the city of Stafford and we should have activities that reflect the face of Stafford in that facility so everyone could come and everyone would be welcome. The Stafford Center frequently features events from India, Asia, Africa, and South America as well as North American performances. In fact, in December, the theater was the locale for four sold out Houston's Urban Nutcracker performances. Houston Urban Nutcracker is the widely popular African American interpretation of the classical Nutcracker Ballet. The Stafford Center is one of the highlighted attributes of this great city, and we continue to invest in its future. This past year, we upgraded our theatrical lighting, and during this fiscal year, we will be replacing our 20-year-old chillers and building automation system. The future looks even brighter for the center, and we are committed to fostering its continued growth. The Human Resources Department, headed by Ms. Chanel Garcia. The City of Stafford's Human Resources Department is centralized for all departments within the city and is responsible for a variety of core organizational functions, which include employee relations, compensation and benefits, employee training and safety, recruiting and onboarding of, and performance management. Human Resources worked with public personnel consultants to complete and implement a market compensation study that evaluated the city's market competitiveness. All employees received a salary increase as a result of the surveys 
completed in 2022. Human Resources worked with all city departments to either recruit, hire, or onboard 50 plus employees in 2022, which included some newly added positions and department heads. 176 full-time budgeted. This included the four new fire positions approved in December and 85 part-time budgeted. So let's take a look at where some of these new positions and people are. Finance, we have one brand new full-time staff account Development services, one full-time project manager, one part-time GIS technician, and I might state that that position is in the transition of being converted to a full-time position. One full-time code compliance technician will be our first ever, and they will handle rental registration one full-time economic development administrator which is reconfigured and moved to development services in the police department we added one full-time police sergeant dedicated to smsd one full-time police officer dedicated to smsd so that's two new positions on top of our current police officers on this campus in the fire department i'm sorry and one part-time telecommunications officer in the fire department we added the three full-time fire lieutenants the three full-time firefighter positions and we also are in the process of looking for a part-time grant coordinator to assist us in our grants Human Resources got one part-time HR administrative assistant. Multimedia Communications, one full-time SMSD production engineer, which transferred from a contract to full-time, and he is sitting right there in the back controlling everything that goes on tonight. That's a total of 17 new or modified positions of which 14 are full-time and three are part-time. The city was able to maintain minimal increases for all lines of insurance coverage and introduced a new plan that includes a health savings account which allows another avenue for employees to prepare and save for future retirement. Insurance cost. In 2022, Human Resources hosted or helped coordinate a number of engaging or educational employee events, such as vaccine clinics, hosted in-person enrollment meetings, employee appreciation dinners, Veterans Day recognition, leadership retreats, public works training. The multimedia department. The multimedia department continues to grow with new direction, with new director Robert Frith and an additional full-time multimedia specialist. Also, and most recently, an offer was made and accepted for a new website and social media specialist who we are confident will contribute to the expansion of our online presence, which will increase more traffic on the World Wide Web as well as physically to our city. This addition solidifies the multimedia staff of four with decades of experience and expertise. The city has newly 
designed website was launched, it has already proven to be an integral tool for our communicating with our community and beyond. We are working to continue growing the website's capabilities with helpful additions that will allow easier access to vital information for our citizens. We are constantly communicating through social media with Facebook, Instagram, Nextdoor, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter with vital information, extreme weather alerts, including professionally produced video vignettes with life-saving information, community events, notification, and more. We continue our collaboration with Houston Community College to produce and broadcast on SMS TV and posting online every meeting in our city the Stafford Weekly News, which showcases the many amazing things happening in our city. Special events such as the July 4th Freedom Ring Concert. The SMSD Education Foundation's Benefit Golf Tournament and Holiday Concert. And the Spartan Sports Central show that shines a bright light on our outstanding Stafford schools, athletes, and coaches. We have completed and implemented a new mini studio within City Hall, which allows for more flexibility to produce high quality and important communications. With the stated additions and progress, the multimedia department's goal for this new year are continue the growth of our website and online presence to include new and creative ways for our citizens to gain easier access to vital information as well as report issues and concerns. Create and distribute professional, high quality communications about our city and services. Providing a one-stop shop for citizens to go to for anything they may need from the city. And strengthening and solidifying city and business collaborations on all multimedia platforms to greatly increase commerce for the city of Stafford. The Development Services and Public Works Department, led by Mr. Jose A. Pastrada, professional engineer. Mr. Pastrada and this department continues to provide excellent and effective service to the residents and commercial developers. Placing special interest in attracting new businesses and ensuring all Stafford residents enjoy a high quality of life with safe streets, flood protection, access to dining, and a full spectrum of services. There are several components to this department. It is truly multifaceted. The development services side is composed of permits, inspection, planning, and zoning, which strives to provide the best customer service for both residents and businesses who seek to pull permits or develop in the city. The planning and zoning oversees current and long range planning through the review of construction plans, 
specific use permits, zoning amendments. Permits and inspection issues, construction permits, and ensures compliance with all applicable building codes and city ordinances. The prime directive of the department is to make the development experience seamless from initial pre-application meetings to final occupancy. And I want to tell you that is something we take seriously and we're working extremely hard to make sure that happens. This group of talented and dedicated professionals ensure that all construction happening in Stafford meets all the applicable codes, laws, and regulations thus ensuring that the city develops in an orderly, attractive, and enduring fashion. In the year 2023, development services will place particular emphasis on redevelopment within our city limits. To that end, we will focus our attention in updating the city's master comprehensive development plan and ensuring that the capital improvements plan, land use plan, and zoning map are all in sync. Getting these plans to march in step will ensure effective development and redevelopment efforts and optimize the use development of our most valuable assets, our land. The Public Works Department is responsible for maintaining the streets, drainage, park facilities, vehicles, landscaping, right of way, and properties owned by the City of Stafford and the Stafford Municipal School District. Public works also includes building inspections and engineering design and construction, which is responsible for managing capital improvement projects, engineering plan review, and planning. 2022 was just as 2021 was, full of challenges including a winter storm and the ever-present hurricane threats. Public Works crews rose to the challenge throughout the year, providing effective disaster preparedness and recovery of the city. The city of Stafford's, as always, count their professionalism and dedication to the public work crews. The Public Works Department counts itself as the tip of the spear in disaster recovery. The true first responders who at all times ensure the safety of citizens and city resources. The Street, Parks, and Vehicle Maintenance Division is comprised of a few proud, hardworking, can-do employees. Their mission includes providing top-notch, responsive public work services to the city's parks, street maintenance, and drainage system operations and maintenance. This group is also responsible for all environmental matters, TCEQ compliance, coordinating with adjacent municipalities, floodplain management, and supporting Stafford Municipal School District. They, of course, also provide direct support to fire and police we're in responding to an accident and emergencies. As a side note, these few and proud employees are responsible for facilities maintenance throughout the city 
and traffic signal, safe street safety lights, and right-of-way matters. Coordination of landscape along Highway 59 and 90A with TxDOT. The city's public works department spearheaded a project with TxDOT re-landscaping the freeze damage areas along Highway 59 and 90A. The city paid for the design and construction. Management of the project and TxDOT paid for all the materials, equipment, and labor costs. And I might mention now that TxDOT has been in contact with us. They want to join together for a third project and we're in process of making sure that happens. The Stafford Code Compliance Team is made up of animal control, consumer health, residential rental inspection, and code and zoning enforcement. The City of Stafford's Code Compliance Department's commitment to the safety and the well-being of our citizens, pets, property owners, and patrons is a testament to the team's dedication and professionalism. The Stafford Code team have gone above and beyond to ensure our community is a safe and enjoyable place to own a home, own a business, or to visit any of the restaurants in our community. The work that the Code team does on a daily basis is not always easy, but it is necessary to maintain the high standards that we have set here at Stafford. The team has performed admirably through long and difficult times, managing to provide services with a smile and the highest degree of professionalism. They will certainly meet all expectations in the years to follow. Economic development is another component in this department. It is my desire in the near future to fill our economic development position. This position is the latest addition to this department. I believe it will allow for more efficiency and provide one central department to meet the applicant's needs. The Information Technology Department under Director Ryan Young, and I want to tell you, I have put this department through the ringers. People ask me, what do you like most or what, what is you really enjoyed about being mayor? I said, number one is the people I've met in the community, the wonderful staff we have here at the city, and when my technology electronic devices don't work, I pick up the phone and ask IT to come fix it. I'm going down the hall to get a cup of coffee, and when I get back, please have it fixed, and they do. People in this audience, my family and City Hall know that I am the most inept technology person on the planet. Information technology is an internal service department. It is responsible for providing the technological tools that allow the other departments of the city of Stafford to function more efficiently. This technology provides access to outside resources, information collection, and ease of use applications that allow city staff to function in a modern world. The Information Technology Department has recently completed projects to redesign the phone system into a redundant failover configuration, implemented improved network security, increased network fault tolerance, imp 
implemented a completely new backup and recovery system and implemented a server room environment monitoring system. The near future plans are for further improvements to the city's data center facility to allow for continued improvements to the city of Stafford's technology infrastructure, as well as the implementation of new tools for the management and monitoring of the city's data system. The Municipal Court Department, Judge Deborah Sinclair presides over the court and Ms. Nicole Nguyen, along with the deputy clerks, facilitate the daily operation. The court department continues to operate on a full schedule. There are still some COVID protocols in place, such as masks are required while in the court and plexiglass dividers are still used in the seating areas to protect the citizens as much as possible. The Texas Supreme Court has issued its latest orders that require these continued protections. The court department continues to use Zoom proceedings in special circumstances. Special circumstances will include defendants that are ill or that live out of the town. The court department is continuing with its evening docket on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month at 5.30 p.m. As a convenience to our citizens, the court department accepts payments of fines via phone, online or in the drop box located at the front of the court department. The court department staff is always available to answer questions during court hours, which are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on the second and fourth Tuesday from 8 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Now let's look at our contracted professional services. Mr. Art Pertile and his associates with Olson and Olson continue to advise and guide our legal needs. Again, let me say this. I believe them to be the premier municipal law firm and have served this city exceptionally well. And one other footnote, they were the law firm that successfully argued and won the creation of the Stafford Municipal School District. Jones Engineering Solution, led by Mr. Bob Jones, continues to guide our engineering plans through mobility, drainage, and other infrastructure issues. His professional expertise and knowledge has and continues as an invaluable component for our city. Mr. Lawrence Vaccaro, a longtime and most valued member of our team, continues to provide invaluable information in many areas of the city's operation. So now let's focus on a few facts. Stafford is still moving forward with a bright future in my opinion. Our certified tax base is $3,739,344,022. Up by five hundred and seventy five million eight hundred and fifty one thousand one hundred and ninety eight that's seven square miles these increased evaluations help smsd and wcid number two continue 
to improve their tax base by the city continuing to grow its base. We must continue to remember we are a complete city, not a bedroom community. And I want to back up a little bit. The tax base totally in every way helps WCID number two. It causes some problems for SMSD until and unless the state legislature adjusts the funding formula for all school districts in the state of Texas. The continued growth of this city, which is the economic engine for the city, the school district, and the water district, at some point in time, the growth of this city will outdistance the ability to put children in seats in SMSD. And when that happens, SMSD is going to write a check and send money back to Austin because of an antiquated, unfair, unrealistic, unviable school funding formula which they refuse to address, and this has gone on since the great Robin Hood bill was put in place. That's my editorial comment for tonight, and I'll have more on that as the legislative session goes on. The fund balance increased from $4.3 million in 2021 to $7.6 million in 2022. Stafford continues to rank in the top 6 to 7 percent in sales tax receipts in the entire state of Texas. And the first time I ever saw this in January of 21, I started at the very end and worked forward because I knew we weren't in the top 20. And then I was going page by page and I was shocked that we were in the 60s. But it says something about the city of Stafford. 2023 goals. Goal number one, diversity. In my personal opinion, the diversity of this community has shaped who we are today. We can never allow any distractions to take away the pride, the togetherness this community has embraced. And I'm going to say this one more time, and so far nobody's proven that my statement is not correct. We all know that Fort Bend County is the most diverse county in, in the state of Texas and probably in the nation. At least it was a year or so ago. As I look at the current census and compare 25, 25, 25, and 25, as the federal government has established, the percentage ratio closest to the 25 threshold of the major cities that I've looked at in Fort Bend County, we are percentage-wise the most diverse city in this county. So therefore, I declare us the most diverse city in the state of Texas percentage-wise. And I will welcome someone to show me that I'm wrong. Goal number two, increase our fund balance. We have made improvements over the past two physical years. The balance is increasing. In government, it is vital not only for our daily operation, but very critical for the rating agencies. Goal number three, and this has been around for a long, long time, mass transit. We must continue to find ways to improve 
transit in Stafford and the region. We are running out of land. We are literally out of land to expand our roadways and ultimately we will have to accept another form of travel other than us all running out every morning, jumping in our vehicle and taking off forever. Goal number four, quality development, redevelopment. This is what our future is. If we are successful, we will continue to attract individuals to our community and to SMSD. These families with kids are looking for the right place and the right school. I think we have both. We just need to continue to build on it. Many conversations are ongoing as to how to best accomplish our goal. Goal five, city, SMSD, and HCC. A truly unique opportunity in one location. You can receive your high school diploma and an associate's degree or certificate at the same time. In fact, this past year, whatever amount of graduates, I think it was 30 something, graduated from HCC two weeks with an associate degree before they graduated from SMSD. The numbers are increasing yearly. This coming May, it is anticipated that 68 SMSD graduates will qualify with 38 receiving an associate's degree and 30 receiving a certificate in four programs. So you graduate from high school one day, you graduate from HCC on a different day, and they tell me, whoever this proverbial day is, that that's about a $50,000 savings to that family and that student. Now just think about that. You can now go on to a four-year institution, finish up your BS or whatever, and with that 50,000 you saved, hopefully you saved it in the bank, you can now get a master's degree in the same four years. We must continue to expand on each and every opportunity. So in conclusion, what can be drawn from the information presented? First, as the old saying goes, never rest on your own laurels. We all know what we have and what we are facing. Only the good Lord knows what lies ahead for each of us. In my opinion and foremost, we need to use our common sense. As we move forward, we must stick to the principles that have guided us and have led us to where we are and continue to improve on those. As a united city, we can take advantage of the opportunities we are presented and move into new programs and incorporate new ideas. I wish to assure you that I, this city council and our city staff understand our responsibilities and are committed to moving all of Stafford forward with the help of our entire United community. Again, we are one as we move forward 
into 2023. Respectfully submitted, Cecil Willis, Mayor of Stafford. Thank you. Okay, we will now go to item four, questions and comments from the public regarding the mayor's annual state of the city message and goals for 2023 and responses by mayor, city council members, staff, and professional advisors regarding the items listed on the agenda. If you will approach the lectern, uh, at some point sign in so we can get back to you if we need to. So anyone who wants to address any of the topics on the agenda or anything in the state of the city, you're welcome to step forward at this time. And those items are listed A through Q on your agenda. And that's 17 items, so hopefully we've covered everything. So don't be bashful. Somebody has to be first and somebody has to be last. So we've got two people right up front flipping coin to see. And we have a little timer, and it has a nice little bell to it when your time is up. Thank you, Virginia Robinson. I'm not going to take much time, but I congratulate each department that is working in Minnesota to make this, keep this city as great as it is. Well, our seven square miles, we're so proud beyond measure that, that uh, we have overcome the COVID and been really successful. Uh, the only one question I have, and I know it is, but for those that the mayor mentioned uh, for police chief of Paris, if you can explain what the flock cameras are. So the, the, the flock camera system are uh, license plate readers, not surveillance cameras, but they're license plate readers. They're invaluable tools that help the detectives uh, when they're following up on cases. Um, as the mayor mentioned in his uh, speech, the flock camera most uh, recently uh, had a high profile uh, result in the recovery of a child that was abducted out of Del Rio. Del Rio Police Department tracked using LPRs uh, the suspect all the way to the Stafford area uh, and we were sitting there waiting at their house uh, when he arrived so the young lady was recovered and were reunited with her family. And I just want to say that um, as the city, the growth that we've having, it's so important to keep up with all the apparatuses that are so instrumental for helping law enforcement and our first responders. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rosas. Next. Good evening. Clint Mendonca, uh, 12343 Fern Meadow. Uh, just commenting in general, uh, I really appreciate all of the hard work that all of City Council, all of the city has been doing. I know just not this just past year, but the past three years have been very difficult with the loss of uh, Mayor Scarcella, moving on to the pandemic, everything that we've had to work through, uh, not having the city property tax, so we didn't get to fully take advantage of all these increased property values, but also depressed economic activity costing us potential sales tax revenue and throughout it all y'all have y'all have fought y'all have worked your way through you've done what compromises you've had to uh, to keep the balanced budget to keep everything paid to keep everything moving forward for the city it's really really appreciated uh, also i wanted to comment that i i really appreciate all of the things you do to make this continue to feel like a small city very, very different from the city of Houston, from being able to talk to someone like Chief DiCamillo when I've got a problem, or even call up one of my city council members and actually get a response, be able to have that conversation, have 
needs and questions addressed in a timely manner. It, it's just so much different than when I lived in Houston just six years ago, and I thank you for all the hard work y'all do with that. Uh, the last two times that y'all saw me up here at this annual meeting, I expressed if there's anything y'all need from me, I'm happy to serve. Thankfully, in the past uh, year, I've gotten two of those opportunities to help contribute in some way to the city. And unfortunately, my wife could not be here today. She's a little under the weather, but she and I look forward to helping out in any way we can for many more years to come. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Council, uh, and congratulations. Great presentation, lots of information, and thank you for the coffee back there. It helped. <laughs> I am a City Council member, Monica Riley, from Missouri City. Uh, I am your sister uh, city uh, next door. And as you know, many of, uh, many of you know that I do serve in a District A capacity in my councilship. Uh, and so District A is in conjunction with the city of Stafford. So many of your streets that are connected to Texas Parkway, South Gessner, and Highway 90 are connected to District A. And so um, as you guys move forward in your uh, development, I want you to uh, consider uh, item J and item um, P um, as a part of revitalizing and targeting the Texas Parkway area where the city of Stafford um, is a part of that particular corridor. We in District A are revitalizing our Texas Parkway and Cartway corridors, and we're doing incentives and initiatives to help improve those uh, property buildings over there with our property owners so that we can bring in more economic development businesses and grow and help them to improve their facades and their exteriors. So as you guys are preparing for your 2023 year or as you budget for the following year, if you guys have any opportunities to partner uh, with myself, City Council member of District A, to see how we can make initiatives to make sure that the Stafford side of Texas Parkway is inclusive and as well as it's growing um, and it's upgraded so that we can have a unified effort. C city of Stafford has the, to get, uh, we, we are one, well the city of Missouri City has a motto of together we excel. So I hope that we can continue to work together to improve both of our cities together and so I believe that together we excel because we are one. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, City Council, uh, faculty and staff. Uh, my name is Manuel Hinojosa, and uh, my comments are gonna be touching on item B, G, H, and O. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for the, the presentation. First of all, I wanna say, um, Congratulations um, to all of uh, the faculty and, and uh, city council. We really appreciate um, all the support that the city of Stafford does for Stafford Municipal School District. Um, and um, in terms of the security they provide and all of those uh, efforts for our students, um, as you know, security and, and safety have been a huge uh, focus and effort. And I do want to thank, Mr. Mayor didn't mention this, but uh, for the view in public, um, the city of Stafford also was instrumental in supporting um, our second um, uh, annual, not annual, but our second uh, iteration of the day with the Secret Service um, at, and sponsoring the Stafford Center. And we had a tremendous showing um, from all over the greater Houston area, um, dealing specifically with safety and security and interventions that, that can occur to help prevent tragedies like the one that, that occurred in Evalde. So, uh, he, that wasn't mentioned, but that was also a huge support that the city uh, contributed. Um, also, um, uh, he mentioned the uh, Stafford Municipal School District. There, there is a lot of great things happening at, at Stafford, um, and um, we could uh, take probably just as long to, to showcase all of those things, but uh, he mentioned the, uh, the partnerships with HCC and the graduates. Um, we're, we're looking for, forward to continue to grow that and expand that. Um, and we have a lot of initiatives that are ongoing. Um, um, our students um, are, are excelling and they're thriving. And that is uh, all due to the support and participation, not only of our community, but our municipal partners, which is the city of Stafford. Um, and then uh, finally, we do give thanks for uh, the privilege to participate and allow our students to, to use this facility as well. 
Uh, we thank you. We hope that you continue to make good decisions and always support uh, not only the community, but Stafford Municipal School District. Um, thank you for your service. Thank you, President Hinojosa. President Hinojosa was the first SMSD graduate to serve on the board, and now he's president of the board. So he can explain to everybody how it was in the good old days. <laughs> All right, any other member of the public wish to speak at this time? Don't, don't come over here and not speak. You could have stayed at home and watched. So tell us something or ask something or do something. <laughs> I figured I'd embarrass somebody into going. <laughs> We got you on film. You we got me on film. Yeah. Dr. Robert Bostic, Superintendent, Stafford Municipal School District. I think, Mayor, am I the second longest serving superintendent in this? No, school? I'm declaring you're number one. Oh. <laughs> We'd like to thank the city of Stafford, Mayor, Council, staff. We'd like to thank the city of Stafford, your outstanding staff. We love you. You continue to back us up. You have since we were created, and you do to this very day. The efforts that he talked about because we are one, one city, one school district, one direction. And as long as we're pushing in the same direction, we will continue to win despite all of these other things that are around us. There are a lot of people looking at us right now. Just like Stafford took some steps many years ago to decide to create the only municipal school district in the state of Texas, the best school district in the state of Texas, and people said we couldn't do it, and not only did we do it, we did it better than anyone else. People aren't always going to agree with what we're going to do. And we have a lot of people here, and we have seven square miles. Continue to do what's right, not only for the citizens, but for the children and for this community around you. You will find the state and others will continue to follow you. I just want to thank you, thank our mayor, thank our city and our members, our, uh, the, the, the people who live here, the best people in the world. Thank you. For that that's all I have to say thank you doctor we appreciate it the feeling is mutual all right if, if you don't speak here there's a new rule you can't speak at City Council meetings <laughs> all right last call all right we will now go to item five, comments by mayor and city council members, and there's five minutes. I just want to start off with thank you all. We appreciate all of you coming. The speaking order, since it's never been changed for this meeting, the next will be Mayor Pro Tem Jones. Thank you, Mayor. I want to congratulate you on delivering another uh, State of the City address. I know how important that is to you. But first and foremost, in rebutting, no one has proposed reinstating a property tax on this council that I know of. That is a fact. Every year with our budget process, toolbox in tow, we are, we, in tow, the, ma the mayor is afforded an opportunity to evaluate the functionality and or effectiveness of executing the final financial decisions made for a fiscal year. Last year, for reasons rightfully of my own, from my seat on City Council, I decided in the 11th hour to vote no for the proposed 2021-22 budget, excuse me, 22-23. For two years in a row now, within the mayor's speeches on the topic of the state of the local economy and or the state of the city's budget, um, he has exuded unequivocally that Stafford is alive and well with the current economic theory and or process which is explained away by a simple phrase that is not based on an economic principle and or theory that we just have to simply live within our means. Because of this continuum of what I consider a lack of vision or maybe for the need of a new tool for the, for the toolbox or even a new set of tools, this year my economic opinion has not fundamentally wavered a bit from last year. My fellow Staffordians, first and foremost, I honestly believe that the annual adoption of the mayor's proposed budget is the most important responsibility and or duty we have as a City of Stafford, Texas Council member. To begin, 
I have good news about the processing of the currently, excuse me, the proposed the city budget. We have at least one new tool. After serving three terms on council, I am proud to report that we finally have a clear-eyed, competent, and an exemplary level of professionalism in our finance department under the leadership of Director Al Shaw. As the former chair and current co-chair of the Compensation Insurance Benefits Committee, from the time that she arrived, I've made a concerted effort to establish an open line of communication with her for obvious reasons. Her opinion of the structure on the structure of the city's compensation and or benefits plan is, has been vital to all that is relevant to the budget. As is the case with several of our department heads, Alka lost a critical staff member this year. Through it all, she and I are fundamentally, philosophically, and or strategically on the same page as we strive to think forward on the best practices on process and or procedures for budgeting with one goal in mind, the adoption of a balanced budget. The not so good news is that year after year, the mayor uh, continues to operate with the status quo rubber stamping to approve the budget. The health and or soundness of the city's fiscal health is based on an economic model that is dependent primarily on local, the local economy's capability to generate sales tax revenue. Quite frankly, a concern from, my, uh, from, from me uh, as the Mayor Pro Tem is the following. The ability to maintain an economic model that inadequately funds the overall budget, critical lack of funds to restructure the compensation and or compression plan, current compression plan, city's inability to compete, retain and or recruit in hiring most qualified candidates, neglected conditions of our city's infrastructure, any all civic aesthetic monuments go unmaintained, unpreserved, and or unenhanced, no landscape beautification plan, so severely unattended, lack of a functional irrigation system for landscaped areas, in my opinion. Briefly, on the fundamentals of an economic, economic model, an economic model includes several economic variables and describe the nature of the logical relationships between the variables. Economic models include variables and require that assumptions are made. A variable is just the value of an economic quantity. The, assumption, the assumptions often involve some variables constant in allowing one or two variables to change. With our budget, the status quo thinking is that the sales tax revenue variable gener generates enough funds to adequately balance the annual budget. It is my opinion that our economic model is inade inadequately generating revenue funds to balance the budget. I believe a change is needed. The relationship between variables can be expressed graphically, mathematically, or ver uh, verbally. Thank God our finance director chooses math. Is that, is that my time? That's time up. Oh. All right, okay. Thank you. Councilman Guerra. Thank you. I'm going to try to compress everything i got in my head, but uh, I'm going to start with the continuation of supporting SMSD is the utmost in my office <coughs> administrative uh, position, not only in uh, the monetary, but the legal ends of it. And... Uh, and I can't begin to thank them for what they've done for my children. Going on to the uh, city business, uh, I'm never really satisfied with status quo. I have never have been over the decades that I've been in office. And uh, I look forward to working this coming year and not only elevating the economic model of this city to bring in more refund, I mean more funds to our treasury because with the economic model that we have, we are continuing to move forward and, and to get what we need, not only in the uh, public sector, but the residential areas that need to be addressed. And the other situation is the continuation of the economics of this city so we can erode our debt service. And if you look at uh, our school, we've been eroding that debt service with sheer economic growth of the city. 
And with the economic growth of the city, we address all developers. I meet with developers every, every week, and the prime developer that I deal with is street level. And that's going to be a primary uh, factor in our economic growth of this city. Of course, we are focusing also on uh, Howie 90 and 1092. And that's going to be a uh, situation that we have to address to get new businesses and more economic growth in those city, in that part of the city, excuse me. And with that all said, I'm here to say that uh, we're doing the best we can with everything we work with and as far as a council pulling in the same direction. Uh, I can't begin to thank some of our uh, council members and everybody has a, an expertise and uh, I want to share that uh, in public that I appreciate what they do. I want to also thank all the directors of the EDC and uh, all the work they do. And one of the things that we discussed last night is to improve our safety. And that's going to be uh, more money being invested in these cameras that are being deployed. And uh, one of the cameras uh, helped arrest a very high profile uh, situation that was in the news. And they followed that criminal from Del Rio to his front yard. And that's the kind of touch we need in our crime fighting for our police officers and give them the tools to fight crime with. Uh, if you don't realize, the uh, officers are up to about 100,000 with training. And if you put that into the kind of cameras we're putting in, it really cuts the cost of having uh, more police, but it fights the crime even better to have those kind of tools to be deployed it in all, res I mean, all uh, industrial, retail areas and uh, and that it's we're limited to that and hopefully we'll have enough funding into it that we can also help the neighborhoods have them in their in the residential areas and uh, I'm, I'm really real proud of that because that was initiated back when uh, the uh, Mrs. Taylor who was the uh, uh, employee of the city back uh, maybe 15 years ago, and it started evolving to what it is now. Thank you. Councilman Matthew. Thank you, Mayor. Thank God I am in Stafford. I came here nearly 40 years ago. My children went to only one school here, SMSD, and they are doing good. Dr. Bostic and members of uh, SMA, uh, uh, school board members, you came up with a very nice slogan, we are one. It seems like the city of Stafford is adopting we are one slogan, and it's a very nice thing that you came up with. Since we are a very small city, oh, let me thank everybody who are watching and who, those who are here and I shouldn't forget all of you because you have taken time to come here and watch us what we are doing, hear us what we are doing. So, since we are only a small city, seven square mile, since we have only one main source of income, that is sales tax, I stood so strongly for the businesses that you see in the promenade subdivision. Because at that time, a quite a few people did not want that to happen there. There was going to be a, some kind of a warehouse or factory. And people of especially promenade subdivision, came over here, sat here for up until, I guess, until two o'clock in the morning, talking against having a warehouse or factory in their neighborhood. So what we have to go and do, which I have been saying for a long, long time, 
the people are going, probably going to get tired of it because the reason being we are surviving based on, uh, from the sales tax. Warehouses are not going to give us a sales tax. Factories are not going to give us a sales tax. What we get is a sales tax from the retail businesses. So wherever there is an opportunity to build a sales tax generating businesses, that's what we have to go after. And especially our island area is a very nice, very busy location. And my, there are so many properties are vacant, very old kind of a thing. If our city can accumulate and buy all those empty spaces and then, and then we can make this island area like a, a town center in Sugarland because we can have so many businesses come there and we get sales taxes from there and that island area will, will, will look very nice all the time. I know you are all getting tired of it because I am, because we are becoming empty nesters, the city. <clears throat> we need new subdivisions and we need to attract young professionals to come here. Otherwise, for a long time, the future of the city is not going to be that bright. So that's what I want to pursue. Maybe some people, a lot of people are getting tired of it, but I have to stress on that point, please do those kind of a thing for the future of the city, of nice city. Like I said, thank God I am in Stafford. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Chin. Good evening, I want to thank everyone for joining us here tonight and, what, or, and maybe a lot of people watching online from home tonight. Special thanks to Stafford METV for putting tonight's town hall meeting online. As the census show, you know, Mayor say that Fulbing County is the most diverse county in the nation. So Mayor Willis also believe our city is the most diverse city in the United States. I was first Asian American woman elected to the city council in 2019, and I would like to thank the voter of Stafford. Uh, allow me to this, uh, this opportunity to serve you. I have been working hard every day for the city and for the, for the school, and I will continue to do so. I'd like to share some great news with all of you. Last August, our Stan Magnet School, which just opened one year ago, received an A rating from Texas Education Agency. It is awesome achievement, and I would like to congratulate, congratulate Dr. Vasic, also the school trustees, principal teachers, parents, most important, our students, for your hard work and commitment. As you know, the good school district can attract young family moving to our city, and business will follow to serve them. So that means we're gonna have a more sales tax if people move in, business move in, People are gonna, uh, sales tax gonna increase and also more job opportunity for our resident. I also very excited to report that after much work, we receive Kelsey Seabold Clinic Fellow Program Grant in the amount of $250,000 for our Stafford students. I worked very hard for a few months talking to Kelsey Siebel's top leadership team before I bring them to, our, uh, to meet our Dr. Basic. And finally, we, we make this program, incredible program, a reality for our Stafford students and teachers. This fellowship will provide two year, $10,000 scholarship each year to our Stafford student who have applied a four-year college or university in the medical field. This program also provides $2,500 grant for, for the fellow teachers. So big thanks. I want to thank you, Dr. Basic, and also SMZ Education Foundation Board President, Ms. Angela LaCour, for their support and also partnership. Our Stafford student is the future of our city and our country. We will continue to provide uh, more 
educational resources and opportunity for our staff and students to reach their full potential. As a vice chair of city council in finance committee, I please to report to everyone the staffer, external auditor, give the city a clean or a modified opinions. Your city council member will continue monitor the city expenditure, and we will also holding workshop looking for ways to increase or and improve our general fund after we receive our audit financial statements. <clears throat> after two years of pandemic, we all isolated, but the city hosts a very successful July 4th celebration. Uh, we have live band uh, performers to agree our VA heroes. We have delicious foods, drinks, kids activity, and many dough prize. More than 2,500 people attend this event. Thanks to July 4th, uh, celebration committee members and many volunteers, and also our police, fire, public work department. Thank you. I look forward for even more successful events this year, July 4th. I was pleased to participate in Santa Combria, which just hand out more than 400 stuffed animals to our staff or children. Unfortunately, Santa ran out the toys at the end. So I urge everybody to donate more toys to Santa this Christmas so he can deliver toys to every children in Stafford. This city also hosts a free pet pantry giveaway and pet adoption events. I want to thank you, Houston Human Society, to, okay, Human Society, sorry, it's not, it's my timer, to help, to help us. In closing, I want to express my appreciation to Mayor Willis, my fellow council members, and along with police and fire chief with their team, do an outstanding job to protect our city and our residents. I also want to thank you, all department directors, all city employees, SCDC directors, plan yes. No, 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 it's my, it's not, it's fine. They're they are timing me. I, I do my timer wrong. No, it, it went off down there, so oh. you're out. Okay, thank you so much. Let's work together for a better year for in 2023. Thank you. Councilman Herrera. Thank you very much, Mayor. <clears throat> There's been a lot of good points uh, being that was discussed earlier today, um, <clears throat> such as the sales tax that uh, continues to uh, rise, and we have right now a uh, total tax rate of 6, 6 to 7%. Tax base is close and up by $7.6 million. Um, <clears throat> just to say the, uh, the, the least, I really am uplifted uh, by the mayor's goals for 2023. And I believe uh, that uh, we definitely can do that. As a uh, former Stafford MSD trustee, I am glad and uplifted that uh, we have a continued working partnership with the Stafford Municipal School District. I see President Hinojosa here today and uh, was here earlier uh, with uh, Dr. Bostic. That, uh, that, that's telltaling to have two of the senior leadership uh, of the school district here and uh, has has taken a good amount of their time to, to be with us today. So thank you very much for that. Um, <clears throat> truly appreciate them and their leadership and what they've done, uh, continue working alongside them. Um, and, and lastly, I'll say this, Mayor um, and, and Council, uh, I truly appreciate each and every one of you, um, but I'd have to say more so in hindsight, echoing what, what one of my colleagues here had, had just mentioned, um, I appreciate our dedicated city of Stafford employees who work hard for our community on a daily basis. Without them, whether it's uh, police and fire, um, our public works, our municipal courts, they keep our city going. So um, there's a heartfelt thank you to each and every one of them and of course their directors who, who bring out their leadership skills and, and place it to work on a daily basis. So thank each and every one of y'all. I'm truly uplifted and uh, truly appreciate the goals that's been set upon. So uh, as uh, my colleague just mentioned, let's get to work. Thank you very much, Mayor.
Thank you, Councilman Bostic. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, greetings, Stafford America. Uh, I'd just like to say it's an honor to be here, and thank you for electing me to be your councilman. When I ran for office, my goal was to make our government more accessible, and I feel that's happening. More participation means that new ideas will have an opportunity to be heard, and we need to champion the new. We need to enhance the city of Stafford's brand and nurture our community's greatest asset, diversity, while maintaining zero property taxes. I chose to bet on Stafford America. I feel that this principle did help me get a house in my hometown. We're a community who knows each other and wants the best for each other, especially for those who grew up here. We're a small city with big city problems. Several of my initiatives I want to focus on uh, will actually be working with our first responders on training sessions open to the public for possible CPR training and other licensing opportunities to assist the public as a supplement in times of uh, emergency matters. Uh, another one is the creation of a committee that will focus on community's greatest asset, diversity, and this will champion different celebrations including the Lunar New Year, Juneteenth, Fourth of July, Dia de los Muertos, and other holidays that uh, reflect our community. Uh, the City of Stafford, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, is the idea I want to establish, and this will help create a sense of business located here in Stafford proper. We seek their membership and, we, uh, and their support to help jumpstart quality of life enhancements and capital improvement projects. This entity can be used to help highlight and sponsor Stafford's Shop Local and Stafford's annual restaurant weeks, and ultimately create an opportunity for the community to interact with our local businesses. I would also like to acknowledge Space City Center of Excellence and their future program set for February 9th at 1 p.m. at the Stafford Center. This is open to the public. And um, you can actually learn about future STEM and drone programs. These are things, jobs that are going to be in the future, the jobs of tomorrow, or actually today. Uh, I'm actually in that field. Um, but these are some of the things that I'm actually working on bringing to Stafford. Um, also, we need to talk about hurricane season preparation, expansion of our parks through easements and collaboration with our neighboring jurisdictions, partnerships with anchoring entities such as SMSD and HCC, as uh, the mayor highlighted, and we'll also be leveraging, which we need to leverage to help our community. Further, I'd like to address the issue surrounding our rental homes, the Airbnbs, and short-term rentals. They need to pay uh, a fee um, that's on par with the hotels. If they're going to allow people to lodge in their homes, they need to operate as a business. Uh, also, invest in our public safety and bring them on par with our surrounding municipalities. Public safety is our largest expenditure and we must support them along with all our hard working staff here at the city. There's an opportunity to work on creating a regional framework where the city of Stafford can serve as a staging point for both Harris and Fort Bend counties and ultimately beyond to highlight our ability to assist our net fellow neighbors. I like to assume we do have the best here. Finally, I just want to let y'all know in our last general election, 796 people let their voice be heard, and in the following runoff, 715 people voted. Please vote, and keep your elected officials accountable. Help direct the way our city goes forward. The goal is to ensure that we get more participation, and that's allowing more channels for the public to appear, which includes virtual. Despite the issues most recently at Harris County, control measures will and can be implemented, and the same decorum is expected as in person. I want to ensure that every voice is heard and that your city government is held accountable. Thank you for listening. I hope I didn't exceed my allotted time. I didn't hear the beeper. Uh, you know, stay safe. Check on your friends, as I always say. Check on your friend. Check on your friends. Check on your family. Check on your neighbors. And then, most importantly, just remember: please show more empathy and be courteous to each other. It's, t it's kind of tough out here for us all. So, show a bit more humility and just remember: we're all human. So, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Bostic. On behalf of all of us, thank you for your attention. Thank you for being here. Apologize again for the technical difficulties, but it happened. So without objection, we are adjourned. <laughs>